So today on this frigid day, we are front porching with Alicia yeah. Garcia. Hello. Uh, Alicia, tell, tell me in two sentences a little bit about yourself. I am currently a graduate student at VCU uh, in my second year, trying to make it through uh, the Urban Regional Planning Program, um, where right now I'm focusing on my master thesis, which is um, studying how the youth of this neighborhood in particular are impacted by gentrification. So that is what my focus has been for the last few years, uh, learning about gentrification, learning about the youth, being in relationship with the youth. Um, so that's, I guess, work-wise, academic-wise background. Gentrification is a word that has been uh, in the news a lot lately and is a yeah. word that I feel like a lot of people may not actually understand. So yeah. what, is a, what is a way you like to define what gentrification is? That's a really good question. I think also people think it's a new coin term, like it's the new hot thing, but that was defined in either the 60s or 70s by Ruth Glass. So um, it's not the newest thing on the world in the world. Um, I would say gentrification is when um, middle class residents or upper middle class residents come into the neighborhood, um, a low income neighborhood that is, and um, begin causing rental changes. And I think with gentrification comes community revitalization or community redevelopment as people call it these days, um, with new restaurants coming in, new, um, businesses and services coming in because those middle class residents demand it. Um, so it's just basically, I would say, a huge redevelopment of an area um, that's typically rapid change. Why is it that you think that middle class, upper class uh, entities end up coming into uh, low income neighborhoods? What's the draw? It's affordable, right? So it's cheap land um, and cheap housing for the city. So if in this neighborhood, for example, you can get like a nice starter home for not a bad price, um, six figure. If you go to the fan, you're looking at a million dollar home. Mm. Um, so it's just more affordable, it's close to things. Um, you can go to work and not have to drive 30 minutes if you're living, if you're working downtown. Um, it's, it's right there and it's affordable. Now you mentioned that you know there's people moving in oftentimes into vacant houses and they're yeah. bringing redevelopment. Why is that a bad thing? Doesn't that? I mean, it seems like that would be a good thing. That's a good point. Um, people either say one thing, like it's new, or it's inherently completely bad. Mm -hmm. And can we really say fixing vacant properties is bad? Can we say? redevelopment is bad because with it also comes schools changing um again better services can we really say that youth services are a bad thing can we say that crime rates dropping is a bad thing no but i think there are some effects of gentrification that aren't good for me it's i don't like that not everybody can stay that we're pushing out a class of people because when redevelopment happens property values around also go up, so rent goes up. Um, census data shows from 2000 to 2010, the rent in this neighborhood in a couple of tracks has doubled, like to a point where even I couldn't afford the rent. I would say that's a very negative side effect. I'd also say that services aren't for everybody in the neighborhood. So not everybody gets to enjoy all the redevelopment that we got and that can take away people's sense of place that they've had for 20, 30, 40, maybe even 50 years. It almost seems like what's happening oftentimes is uh, a new community enters an existing community mm -hmm. and the new community begins to take over. And right. it, that community now becomes the new community. Tell me a little right. more about how you see that playing out. So again, just looking at sense of place is something that I'm really interested in. Um, we see again, new services coming into the neighborhood. Um, and it's taking away from what was used, used to be there. Um, say like a group of older men like to hang out on a corner while they can't anymore because police are now coming in saying, what are you doing here? What are your intentions? And I don't think it's inherently bad to have police presence, you know, making sure things are, are right, but they really just want a place to sit and have conversation um, 
so that's pushing them out where they can't do that anymore. Um, our youth, like, don't always feel comfortable walking around in the most redeveloped streets because they don't know everybody on that street or maybe they're being looked at on that street and they can't act the way that they normally act because it's making new community members maybe uncomfortable to some extent because they don't see it as the social norm. So I think it's a cultural clash um, that just takes some time to get used to. I think new communities need to kind of, our new community members need to kind of like be more open to it rather than saying you need to adjust to what I think is normal. When you're talking about services coming in, it's kind of like yeah. a, a you know, custom organic bagel shop, right? right. <laughs> that it's $8 a bagel. Right. What you're saying is that the existing community, especially in a low income community, mm -hmm. might not be able to take advantage of a $8 custom right. organic bagel. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so what we're not trying to say then is that a custom organic bagel shop is necessarily a bad thing, but it, no. it sounds like what we're saying is that some of the choices that are being made uh, can lead to negative impact. Definitely, so definitely. what are your thoughts on if somebody had an idea for a service that they wanted to bring into a neighborhood for mm -hmm. whatever reason, mm -hmm. what are some ways that a new entity can be mindful of the existing community and not yeah. have a negative impact? In my opinion, it's about... Um, what services are you going to offer to the neighborhood? So obviously, like, a shop like that is saying they're offering delicious, healthy goods, which is great. You know, many community members can offer that. But I look at our youth in particular because, again, that's um, something I'm passionate about. They need jobs. So are they going to be willing to hire community members and maybe even teach them the trade of this organic making? Or um, are they going to, you know help them be employable, maybe creating mentorship relationships with these students or even with older community members who are looking for work. I think that's a great way for them to keep the community in mind. Also, like, are they getting to know their neighbors? Like, maybe they only run their shop here. So are they getting to know the people who live around their shop? Or if they do live in the community, are they getting to know their neighbors around them? I think that relationship building is really key. Um, and really important to keep in mind because it can um, mean the world to your neighbor and it also could open their perspective up to something new. Let's say uh, I, am an, I am a resident of this community, I've been here yeah. for 20 years and I see the negative impacts of gentrification right. coming further and further north towards my home. Yeah. Is there anything I can do or is it an unstoppable force? You know, I think it's just bound to happen and like I don't want to say it's an unstoppable force but um, looking specifically at the um, public housing units you know um, there's a lot of talk in Richmond about getting rid of all of them by a certain date and right now Richmond does not have the money um, but they have a plan to okay we didn't get this grant so we're gonna use um, the RAD application which is through HUD and it's ultra confusing um, so I, I don't I don't know if it would be stoppable if the government wants it they're gonna do everything they can to get it um, yeah I don't know it's a really hard question especially if somebody doesn't feel like they have a voice right um, now how about let's say uh, I'm a recent um, resident of the community yeah. relocated here eight years ago and I yeah. care very much about the community and yeah. I see the negative impact it's happening I see the positive gain that could yeah. happen what are some ways I can use my voice to help guide the changing in the neighborhood yeah that's that's good and that's something I'm really passionate about as well I think just being an advocate for those people uh, but not making sure you're not coming in and saying well well this is what you need to know and this is how you need to kind of accept it or this is why it's this or that. I think it's really important again to have relationships with those neighbors um, to build that sense of trust and to um, hear their needs and hear their wants and hear their concerns and work with them together but not come in like this overarching person that's telling them. Because um, it's a learning experience for, for you as a new neighbor as well. Like you you don't know the community as well as they do. Like they have a great voice. And I think um, something that I've seen that's been really cool is um, new residents inviting long-term residents to community meetings with them. Um, 
because they can be really overwhelming and they can be intimidating, um, especially if you feel like the odd one out of the room, uh, despite the fact you've lived here the longest. Um, so I think just doing that, partnering along them, alongside them, I think is is crucial and helpful and relational uh, and real. When I've read articles in gentrification, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll see articles that talk about the improvements, the improvements yeah. to school, the improvements <clears throat> to roads, infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I'll read articles that talk about uh, the negative impact on residents, residents no longer being able to afford it, rents going up $100, right. $200, $500. Right. Uh, what I haven't read much about is something that you mentioned is your focus area is the impact on youth. So tell me a little more about yeah. how is gentrification impacting the youth of this community? Yeah, so I mean, it's doing a vast amount of things to the youth. Um, in my in my research so far, one, I found that schools are changing. Um, there are improvements in their standardized testing scores. Um, what's interesting about that, it's only pocket change right now. Um, so like one school is doing ex excessively well, one school just lost funding. So um, I think that's interesting. Um, their sense of place has definitely changed. Um, vacant lots are typically used for kids to go play football and do outdoor activities when it's not this cold outside. <laughs> um, but now they can't, those lots are becoming less and less because houses are being built. Um, so now they need to kind of redirect where they're gonna go have football time. Um, I've noticed certain parks um, kids are not using. Um, they're very young professional millennials being in there, not, not the youth of this neighborhood. Um, I'm still trying to figure out if youth are using the new businesses in this neighborhood and what do they think of them. And um, I'm also really focusing on mentorships. So um, there's a bunch of new community members coming into this neighborhood that have a lot of networks that these kids don't have. Um, and I'm, I'm finding that mentors are coming into these youth lives they are inviting them to like, hey, come see my job, come see what I do, or um, just helping them with schoolwork, helping them with college applications, because that could be a really hard process if you have a parent that might not have gone to college or you don't even have internet in your house to do these applications. Um, so I think those are some really positive impacts in regards to mentorships. Um, but I think gentrification needs to be mindful of the fact that it is taking away places youth used to feel comfortable and now they're feeling uncomfortable where they've lived for the past 16 years yeah. so. let's just use churchill as an example mm -hmm. um from where we are right now if you could mold uh things from where they are now what yeah. would be your ideal vision for how these things can all work together. The existing residents, the existing culture, the new culture. I feel like I've said this a lot, but I think relationship is everything. You know, um, when I used to work at Chat, they are so heavy on building relationships. And I think that's what got me to thinking like, yes, that is absolutely crucial. Mm -hmm. um, getting to know your neighbors. Um, even like when you take your kids to the playground, um, there are other kids at the playground. Talking to those kids, like, they're starving for attention. Like, they'll always be like, watch me do this flip on the swing, watch me do that. Like, what a great way to get involved. Um, and then being like, hey, can I walk you home? Getting to meet their parents, just stuff like that. Um, making sure you're walking alongside each other and just being mindful. Because again, like, um, gentrification is not always a race thing, but in Churchill, it happens to be a huge race thing. Um, and I think, we as as white middle class people need to be mindful that our culture is not the dominant culture all the time like remember that their culture is important too and trying to understand that um like porch sitting it's a huge uh cultural thing in this neighborhood and it has been for years and years um i think maybe just sitting on your porch and saying hi to neighbors is, is something that can really change and and mold this thing into something that's more blended than than um, us just coming in and taking over in a sense. Well, gentrification yeah. is uh, being discussed a lot in media. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like there are spaces that it, 
it is being discussed or could be discussed in the community for residents, for new businesses? Uh, if so, what are those spaces? And yeah. if not, what can those spaces look like? I know that Easton Fellowship has done a gentrification conversation a couple of times, and I think that's great. Um, I would like to see more of those, and I would like to see them maybe outside of the church, because maybe not everybody is comfortable walking into a church, or um, maybe they worship somewhere else or, or something like that. So I would love to see like community-wide meetings being held, maybe at the Resource Center or even at one of these new restaurants or utilizing the Robinson, like just meetings going on, inviting people to talk about it. Because again, like we all see it differently. Um, we're all, we all perceive it in a different way. Um, what I see as good is probably bad for some people. Um, so I think we should be having more of those conversations. Um, and I definitely think we need to be aware that high school students have an opinion and they are very aware that their neighborhood is changing. Um, so I think we should be having these conversations with high schoolers here and remembering not to leave them out because their opinions are wildly valuable and um, we should yeah, definitely consider it. If you could say one thing to new businesses coming into the community, what would that one thing be? One. <laughs> one thing. It could be two. Okay. <laughs> one thing. Um, what are your, like, how are you hoping to impact this neighborhood? Like, more than your product, how are you hoping to impact this neighborhood? Um, okay, Cooper. <laughs> um, so I would want to know, like, what are their intentions in this neighborhood almost? And, and not that they have bad intentions. Again, I think businesses have din, done great things um, in the community, but I would want to know, like, are you going to invest or are you just here to be here because it's cheap? So... <laughs> two, two minutes, okay? <laughs> two minutes. If you could say one, one or two things to a long-term resident that is yeah. scared that they may lose their home mm -hmm. or they may lose the culture of their community, what would you say? I would say I want them to talk about it. Like, I think oftentimes pride gets in the way to where they don't talk about those problems or don't talk about those fears. Um, and I would also kind of shed light on some programs that our city has to offer. Um, no, we don't have enough funding to house every single person, but um, housing choice vouchers are great to help pay for rent and to make affordability. Um, I don't know, I would just kind of direct them in, into places and uh, walk alongside them as well and remind them that um, like I'm their neighbor and I'm here and like I don't know what they've gone through and I unfortunately don't understand the struggle of like being afraid to lose your house but um, I'd be willing to listen uh, I think that's what they're really looking for it's just someone to listen to them hear them out for those that like to pray how can they be praying uh, regarding the impact of mm -hmm. gentrification I think just to be praying and asking the Lord um, how can we do this in an intentional way. It's like no matter what, there's always a catch-22 to things. But when you're intentional about it, there are so many more positive benefits than when you just come in and do nothing. Um, so maybe just praying like, how can I love my neighbor? How can I invest in my neighbor? Um, how can I build that relationship with them? I just, again, I think relationship is the most important key to this. Um, it just de helps develop an understanding for what everybody's doing here. So, Five, ten years ago, yeah. there is a very different culture in this community. Right. And we talked about there's a new culture coming in. And yeah. one of the fears is that one culture will be lost and the other yeah. will take over. Do you think it's possible that out of gentrification could come a new and positive and exciting culture? I definitely think so. Yeah. And I think the more we learn about each other, the more that's able to happen. Like, I would love to see a blend of culture. And you already see it, like, at the Robinson Theater sometimes. Like, at events, you'll see students teaching uh, new residents dances and stuff like that. And we might think of that as, like, not their culture, but dancing 
they love it. Like the students love it and it's fun and they love teaching and showing off in a sense. Like, so yeah, having like a new resident being able to nay nay or something ridiculous like that. Like, no, I think it would be awesome. And I think it could happen the more that we invest and get real with one another. Seeing more and more often people of different cultures, different socioeconomic classes, yeah. uh, coming together in common spaces, doing a common work together, whether it's mm -hmm. classes at the Robinson, right. uh, you know, people sitting next to each other at a service decent fellowship, yeah. tutors who make six figures <laughs> you know, right. coming yeah. alongside students through chat or whatever it is yeah. that we're all, you know, coming together and just doing life together. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, it is. Um, are there any last thoughts or last things that you want to share, things that you want people to be thinking about or something things that stood out to you as you've looked into this topic yeah I think just always remember that like there's a story behind everyone um, there's a reason that there's a fear instilled in people um, for losing their homes there's a reason that mobility isn't a fun idea to people um, just knowing the story and I also just want to encourage people to like go to community meetings because there's such a perception about how we need to tear everything down and rebuild um, and I think going to community meetings can really help either broaden that perspective or change it um, but I think just being knowledgeable and educated and aware of your neighbor's surroundings can really make a huge difference and help everyone have a better understanding on the word gentrification because it's thrown around so much it's becoming like the word sustainable <laughs> like i think the more we educate ourselves the better open up your ears and allow your heart to listen to the whisper that carries through the ages heaven's revelation simplified equation love god love yourself love your neighbors heaven's revelation Said I think it's time to talk about freedom